Have you ever sorted through your stock and asked yourself, why did I buy that? If you've been stocking long enough, I'm pretty sure you have. For me, there's quite a few different things that I ask myself, like why the heck did I buy that? What was I thinking? Not necessarily that any particular thing is, you know, a bad purchase, right? Is there any such thing as bad silver? Now, some stockers will tell you there is. If you overpaid for it, that probably makes it a bad, <laughs> bad decision. But again, at least at the end of the day, you have something tangible for it, right? But these are some of the uh, pieces in my stack that I think uh, potentially, you know, for different reasons could be some of my worst purchases. So first and foremost, the, the first one I think is not the greatest purchase. And I look back, I'm like, why did I buy that? So that would be these guys. So these guys are actually, and as you can see, they're kind of scratched up at this point because I really don't even bother taking care of them. But these ones are the collectible coin sets from the Mint. Now, the good part about that is like, uh, personally, I'm really big on uh, the historical aspect of stacking. I like coinage and I just like, uh, you know, Americana, if you will. So these ones uh, at the coin shop, they had, you know, a display that was kind of piling up with these and so i decided hey you know what they've got silver content in them uh some do some don't is my understanding but these ones do uh and so i was like you know what that's uh something I'm, I'm interested in that would be cool to like start collecting those now further on in my stocking career i did see that uh those kind of things are actually a really poor value uh the demand for them really isn't that great and uh and yeah, I mean, they're very easily attainable. Now, to me, again, there is the historical aspect to it. It is still cool as part of a collectible. But every time I do see these, you know, items within my stack, I ask myself, like, why did I buy that? Like, I probably shouldn't have bought that. So I think those kind of things go along with, you know, the learning curve as far as what it is that you, you know, want in your stack. Now, if you're a pure stacker, obviously, you wouldn't even think about buying stuff like that. But I think most stackers kind of go into the, uh, collector phase at some point, at least with some things, right? I mean, even if you're a pure stacker, you know, there's probably some vintage silver or things that you might, you know, spend a little bit more on to collect. So that's, that's the first one that really stands out. Now, secondly, the next one's not so obvious. So these ones I have mixed feelings about. So in the summer of 21, I believe it was, or might've even been early 21, uh, coin shop had a lot of junk silver. So Lots of channels hype up junk, American junk in particular, but this is actually Canadian junk silver. So the uh, coin shop had quite a bit of this Canadian junk silver. Uh, they had these, the First Nation version of, of these coins, and also the, the geese, the goose version. Uh, but, and here we go, these guys. So these guys, my thing with these is that I liked them because it again it's still silver content and and i was going you know hearing constantly about you know it's got you know it's coinage so it, it has added value because you know in the shtf or this or that you know the coinage it's gonna you know it's government backed and blah 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 blah, blah which again in the shtf is is anybody really gonna care probably not but Again, I thought, you know, that would be cool to have some junk silver. And so added, you know, maybe I think 30, 40 ounces worth. Uh, these ones, I think, are an, uh, 0.8 silver, something like that. Uh, and and so added those to my stack. But I think in hindsight, that was uh, probably not the best purchase. Because when I really look at, you know, where they fit in my stacking, it's just, you know, they're just something that it's, I guess cool to have but really there's no purpose and I don't think they were cheap either I think at the time because prices were so high you know it probably overall just wasn't the the, the best purchase is it cool to have you know I like uh, I have family up in Toronto uh, so I've been on you know all over Canada but uh, you know to have junk silver at least you know in a concentration probably not the greatest idea again the learning curve right the next one this one's kind of mixed feelings. So these guys, the one gram gold. So these are obviously for a lot of stackers kind of the gateway, right? This is kind of like what you get into. The first one that you buy to kind of see what is it like to even have any gold. Now, the thing with these guys is they're what? hundred bucks each right off the gates or 80 bucks, 90 bucks, something like that. I think that's what it was when I got it. I got these and I think in 2020 maybe. Uh, so, you know, definitely paid you know a healthy amount for for something like this 
But looking back, I don't think, you know, as far as value, was it really worth it? Probably not. It's nice to have, but again, it really doesn't fit a purpose where I could have just saved up a little more and gotten maybe a five gram or even a 10th uh, ounce uh, coin of some sort. So, which I, I do have, uh, you know, a couple tubes of, of tenth ounce in, in different uh, variations. So, I don't stick to a specific one. It's kind of like whatever's, you know, cheap or reasonably priced that I buy it. So, I've got a lot of uh, Canadian gold tents, uh, some Philharmonics, some Eagles, you know, a mix. But these kind of things, you know, I think the thing for me was initially when I started stocking, I really liked bars more than rounds or coins. Uh, and so gold bars, I mean, who doesn't like the idea of gold bars, right? But the wafers, I, again, I think looking back, it probably wasn't the greatest purchase. Now, the next thing on my list is collectibles. So these here, actually, one of them, I believe it was probably this one. Uh, so again, going down the rabbit hole with the stacking channels, was watching a lot of videos about the collectible, the vintage silver. Hey, you know, get your hands on the vintage silver. You know, it's going to hold up and blah, blah, blah. Engelhard's obviously, uh, you know, the big name there. One of the big names, Johnson Matthey, uh, you know, quite a few different ones. But Engelhard's definitely one of the big ones. The thing there is when I bought this at the coin shop, that was this was actually a really good learning experience for me uh, because when I bought it at the coin shop, there was like a new guy there that I've never dealt with. And he had kind of had, again, I've mentioned this guy a few times. He kind of had a seedy, you know, feeling about him. Like, kind of like, you know, he'd pull one over on you if he could. And so the guy was like, you know, I asked him how much this was. And then I see him like looking at his phone and he brings it up on eBay. And he's like, oh, he's like, they're, you know, I think it was, this was 80 bucks, something like that. So the price for, for sale, not that it had actually sold. And I was like, 80 bucks? I was like, that's a lot. And Silver Spot at this price was 26, 25 at the time. So I was like, uh, but you know, I had this is the first time I've actually seen, you know, the single ounce uh, bars from Engelhard in person. And so I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and get it. In hindsight, again, because, you know, looking back, when I see Silverstruck stack and he's got all the real, you know, desirable Engelhard stuff, I realized that that wasn't a good purchase. Now, this one, again, I overpaid as well at some point, but this one I like too because of the, you know, the embossed back. Uh, so that is pretty cool. These ones, the Johnson Matthey, this one was also kind of the same thing, but again, uh, I still like them. Um, so it's not I don't like them. It's just that I feel like it was a bad purchase because I know that I overpaid. Same thing with this, like this 10 ounce. The 10 ounce here, this is a this is a nice bar. I'm not gonna lie. Like these guys and the Engelhard bar there, they definitely, you know, they're still great to have in the stack. I just feel like, you know, should I have overpaid for it? I probably could have, you know, taken a little bit more time online and purchased it and, you know, been better for not overpaying. It is what it is, the things you learn. But I think the general rule there is, uh, yeah, you don't have to worry about uh, something in stocking world, you know, not being available. If you got the money, it's you're going to be able to find it. So heads up there. Now, the next one, the next one's actually, again, mixed feelings and I could could play out differently. But this guy, so I won't bother opening it up, but this is the one uh, two ounce Seymour Panther uh, Queen's Beast uh, proof. This was actually, I think, the last one that was ever minted with the Queen's image on it. So picked this up because I thought, uh, hey, you know what? That would be pretty cool to have. You know, the, one of the last coins, the last proof uh, with the Queen's image on it before she passed away. Um, and so picked that up. I think it was about $200. It's a two ounce uh, proof. Um, and I think it's pretty much the same value. So that one hasn't played out. Not that I don't like it. It's not the actually, even the proof, uh, it kind of reminds me of the Royal Tudor. Actually, you know what? I think it is not, it is the Tudor Beasts. It is the Tudor Beasts. And you know what? When I bought it, I thought it was the Queen's Beasts, which look different. They have a different look to them. The Tudor Beasts, not a huge fan of. And I think that was my mistake because I, I think if I would have realized that, really taking the time to think, you know, that's the Tudor Beast, not the Queen's Beast, I probably wouldn't have bought that. It is what it is. Now, this guy here, I would say this is one of the exceptions. So not a big fan of eagles in general. Definitely normally wouldn't pay for a slabbed eagle who does that. 
But, and also on Salivate Metal, I did see that apparently First Strike is kind of a misnomer. It's not a real thing. It's kind of like a, you know, there's a lot of First Strikes, quote unquote. But uh, this one actually at the coin dealer, I believe this is the one I ended up getting last year, I think at some point, or yeah, I think it was middle of last year or something like that. But I got this for $27. So I think the thing with this one was it was a kind of a come up on my part. I actually thought about telling them like it was also like a different person, not the normal dude. I thought about telling them that that's probably too little. Um, but I was like, you know what? They make enough money. It's fine. I'm not, you know, scalping them. But uh, I did get this one at a good price. So this one was actually a win in my book as far as the stacking. Now, these guys over here, again, the collectibles, I realized like in hindsight that it just really, you know, there's not much there. You know, there are people who buy these kind of things, but the I haven't seen really a collectible series come out in quite a while that really caught, you know, captivated everybody. Everybody's talking about it. It's huge. You know, I, I've heard recently about uh, the Atmex, I think it is, or the uh, Monument Metals or whatever, the Generals, the uh, coins. I looked at them and I saw the one with Patton and I was like, you know what, it just really, it's not doing anything for me. I, I'm not feeling it. So it is what it is. Now this guy, the Krugerrand. Now it is gold, so gold is gold. We love gold. But the thing here was that, uh, with regard to, you know, Krugerrand versus a different coin, I feel like the Krug really just the desirability is not really there in general. Now I've heard that internationally this is like one of the most common coins uh, for bullion. But here in the U.S., I don't think the demand the demand is there. It's just not a, a lo beloved coin here. It's kind of like the, you know, the Philharmonic where you just really don't, you know, nobody wants it. So I feel like this one, even though I don't think I overpaid, uh, I feel like this one would have been, you know, a better not to buy versus uh, purchasing it. It is what it is, but one of those things in hindsight, I have the one ounce Krug as well, which is, um, you know, pretty nice. Now... Last but not least, this guy. Now I like this guy, don't get me wrong. I like this guy, this is a, uh, you know, silver piece. But the reason that I would say that probably shouldn't have bought this, at least in hindsight, was when I purchased this, it was in the display at the coin shop. So I liked it, I was like, you know, that's pretty cool, it's different, it's California, love California. California, love California, so pick this up. But here's the catch, the kicker. I assumed that this was silver right out the gate. I didn't even ask. I didn't think anything. And, I, you know, when I got back, I was like, wait, was this a collectible of some sort or was this silver? Now, it does have weight to it. So I figured it was silver, but it wasn't until I actually, you know, took a look at it and was like, what in the world that I did see, you know, it's marked. So it is silver, but again this is one of those things where it's like you know you're in the coin shop and you just your eyes roll back into your head and you just start making pretty like yeah give me one of those i'll take one of those i'll take two scoops of that it is what it is these kind of things like i said all it takes is a few of these purchases where you know your money's going right out the door and you don't even and you don't even end up getting precious metals you end up getting you know pack of tops baseball cards with the the gum that's you know 20 years old interesting but again these are some of the le life lessons learned from my stack i hope you don't repeat them